G'day. G'day. Thanks for stopping by. Yes, that's right. We're taking the van up the Cape. We're heading to the tip of Australia, the northernmost point of the Australian mainland, with our caravan, our 23 foot Avenue caravan. So we're not taking the um, telegraph track? No, with our that's van. definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> we're taking the, uh, the, the de de developmental road. The Peninsula Development Road, the PDR. Oh yeah, the PDR. That's what we call it up here. Oh, of course. But our journey really begins in Cooktown. Yeah. Where we're headed right now. Yes, we are. We chose to drive to Cooktown along the coast. It is a beautiful drive that provides spectacular coastal views and then gives way to the rainforest. The road is quite windy and there are a few slow vehicle turnouts to allow the traffic behind us to get past. Then as you head inland just past Port Douglas, it opens up for a beautiful drive up through the northern section of the Great Dividing Range. Drive into Cooktown takes you past the turn off to the PDR at Lakeland. We'll be back for that one. And then it's a pleasant drive down the mountain into Cooktown. Oh, yeah, this part of the trip is all sealed road. Lovely. We stayed at the Cooktown Holiday Park on the edge of town, which cost us $346 for a week with power and water. It is a very nice park, and our site had plenty of space for our van and car. Check out the welcome pack you get from the caravan park here. Little booklet of fishing and bird watching, walking trails and cycling trails, finally get those bikes off the rack. Caravan park. Some members discounts, courtesy buses into town, ring them up and they'll come out and pick you up and drop you off again. Map of the caravan park, map of the area, sites and attractions, we can advise where we might find a croc and how to avoid getting eaten by it, and a visitor's guide to Cooktown. So really looking forward to our time here and exploring some of this area. Uh, going for a ride into town. Check out Cook Town. Oh, big dip. It's a bit blowy, so it'll be interesting. There we go, and it's uphill. <laughs> oh, so we rode up that hill, and this is where we're going to watch the Bulldogs game. I'm not sure what it's called actually. It's a cold pop. The Sovereign? Pub, Pub in Cooktown. <laughs> where we're going to watch the Bulldogs play the final. Cooktown is a well resourced seaside town. So, aside from a couple of days working and some time exploring the area, we used our time in Cooktown to prepare for the trip up the Cape. Part of the preparation was getting the car and van ready. We also needed to know where we will find phone and internet reception. A few things we found to be very helpful for our trip was this HEMA map and an online book called Destination Cape York by Katrin Holmstead. Many caravanners would leave their van in storage here at Cooktown or somewhere along the way before the roads get too rough and then use a swag or a tent, for example, for the trip. But for us, we chose to take the van. Our research suggested that if we drove to the conditions and took our time, we would reduce the risk of serious damage to our rig. This trip up the Cape is probably the biggest trip we've done in the van so far. Certainly in the most diverse landscapes we're going to be dragging this caravan along. And in preparation for that, we had to, I suppose, get some things ready. And one of the things we're doing is um, filling up one of the water tanks. I don't want to fill up both because that adds actually 200 kilos of water nearly. So I'll fill up one of them which gives us 100 kilos because apparently there's water on sites up there but some of the places don't have it and then some that do have it only have warm water so I want to take this water because it's good drinking water 
and I know um, that I can drink it. Um, we're also going to take up some packet packaged water. Now, we've got a couple of 10 litre boxes of water to take with us for fresh drinking water. Um, yeah, we, we think that'll be okay. Some of the other things we've had to do, um, we've had to protect some of the underneath of the van, some of the exposed pipes. And um, yeah, come on, I'll show you that in just a sec. So I've been up to the local discount shop and bought a few pool noodles to protect the pipes underneath. The plastic pipes are at risk of getting hit by rocks and things flying up as we travel down the road. So I've covered the major ones in the riskiest spots. So I'll see how we go. Okay, so we're all hitched up, ready to go. Ready? Yep, ready. Let's go to Cape York. We were quite excited to be setting out on this adventure, but we're also mindful of some of the challenges we would encounter, such as the remoteness and isolation, the road conditions, the lack of phone and internet reception. We also decided that if it got too much for us, we could always turn back. So Paul's been up since 4 a.m. this morning. He tells me he is that excited to go on the Peninsula Development Road. You excited, Paul? A little, yes. <laughs> okay. So th th it's, it's a bit of a challenge. It is. A bit, a bit of an exciting challenge. The unknown. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. We got to this stage, no worries. Now that we're doing the next stage. Yeah. So today we're stopping at Han River Roadhouse. Yep. We've heard great reports about it. Staying there a couple of nights, aren't we? And then we'll be moving on to Cohen. So keep you updated. Well, so our first stop, Han River Roadhouse. The trip to Han River Roadhouse from Cooktown is about two and a half hours and almost all of it's on bitumen except for about five k's of the just before the roadhouse but we were prepared. So we're coming up to some dirt on the road. Our first bit of dirt on the Peninsula Development Road. I'm going to pop the caravan on, which creates the positive air pressure in the van. Give me a sec to check things in here anyway. It creates a positive air pressure in the van so that as we go up there, hopefully, it keeps all the dust out. Let's see how we go. So you can actually feel the, the air coming out of here. We have used the caravan previously and it has worked fine. However, we had heard that the red dust up here can be a bit more tricky to keep out. Well, we were about to find out. It wasn't long and we pulled into the Han River Roadhouse. There's no mobile phone reception here, but you can purchase internet access from the roadhouse. Paul's just gone in to check us in for a couple of nights and look who popped by while I'm waiting in the car. Let me introduce you to Ozzy, the Han River resident emu. G'day Ozzy. It was a large open area for camping. We managed to get a nice powered site with water access that overlooked bushland behind the park. I think this was the only site with a slab, so we're pretty lucky. The site costs $30 a night with power and water. Now the amenities range from your basic shower and a tin shed, this alfresco toilet. I think this fellow was a bit concerned I was jumping in the queue. No worry, you're right, mate. Then, there's also this alfresco shower. 
in all fairness, there were other facilities that were a bit more um, traditional. I think the thing that we enjoyed most here at Han River Roadhouse was the wildlife. There are the agile wallabies that come by for a feed in the afternoon, and there were plenty of them. There is Hercules, the resident miniature pig, who is not so miniature. Hello, Hercules. And of course, there is also Ozzy the Emu, who is always looking for a free fee and who is also known to have a shoe fetish. Sorry, mate, I've got nothing. I fed it all to the pig. And, and he ate it all. What about this guy showing off? Quite a beautiful display. You can highly recommend Han River Roadhouse as a stopover as you travel the Cape. Ready for another day on the Cape York? Yep. Today? Let's do it. Yep. What are we, where are we going today? We're off to Cohen. Cohen. And we're going to Cohen because we need the internet, don't we, to work a couple of days. So Cohen has internet, we know that. It's one of the few places that has Telstra reception. Yeah. Yep. yep. But apparently it's quite good, so hopefully. Yeah. We've been warned that the road is a bit bumpy on the way to Cohen. Yes. Got, we've put, let the tyres down yep. to about 25. Yep. And um, on both the van and the car. Yep. And we're off. Yeah. All right. Let's see how this road goes. Let's see how it goes. We'll let you know. Well, the road was quite corrugated and the vibration was persistent. The landscape had changed and you could sense the remoteness in this area. We sat at around 80 kilometres an hour for most of the trip, sometimes drop as low as 60 kilometres an hour on some of the more corrugated sections. With one stop on the way, we travelled 170 kilometres in about two and a half hours. We arrived at the town of Cohen. Overall, this leg of the trip was quite uneventful and went by without any hiccups. The car was doing well and the van was towing really well. We pulled the van into the Homestead Guesthouse camping area for a few nights. I found a spot at the back of the guesthouse where we were able to hook up to power and water at a cost of $30 a night. The power outlet was quite away from us and we needed three leads to get it to the van. We also had to use our power adapter, our Amphibian Mini, which converts 15 amp power to 10 amp. The town of Cohen was originally built around a repeater station in the overland telegraph line to the tip of Cape York. It also has a gold mining history. Alluvial gold was found here in 1876, but that was worked out in about five months. Several reefs were found at the time, and it continued to be worked for some time after that. When the gold had been exhausted, the town became a bit of a ghost town for many years. And this homestead is a memorial to that history, and you can explore the relics and memorabilia, and it's free. How much is the diesel here in Cohen? Let's have a look. Dollar eighty-five cents. That might cost us a bit. <laughs> what do you think? As a day trip from Cohen, we took a drive out to Port Stewart, a small community on the eastern coast of Cape York. The drive of about ninety kilometres took us one and a half hours on some reasonably good dirt roads. It crosses a mountain range and two rivers. Overall, it was quite a bit of fun. There are so many tracks and trails out here. I imagine it wouldn't be too hard to get lost. Fortunately, the HEMA map that we bought was quite detailed and we stuck the roads marked in that map. We also had our UHF radio and we let the folks back at the homestead know where we were going and when we were back. Yeah. Yeah. 
the chicken. Mm. Well, it's time to hit the road again. It was a tight turnout in the van site, so I left the weight distribution bars off until we got onto level ground. All good. We've been advised that it's best to leave them off if you have tight turns or sharp angles to negotiate. The dust appeared to be getting worse as we continued along the PDR, but so far the van had remained dust free. There were some spots along the way that gave the suspension a good workout. It took us about three hours to travel the 230 kilometres to Bramwell Station Tourist Park, where we stayed for a couple of nights. It cost $25 a night, but doesn't include power or water hooker, but you can fill your water tanks on site. To get the thick red dust on the back of that. Anyway, we're all set up here in Bramwell Station, ready to go out for dinner. How much was it for? Well, this was, um, it is happy hour, so it's discounted prices, $10 for a beer and a Coke. Okay, I'm glad they were discounted prices. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Won't be drinking too much. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. We booked in for the buffet dinner and live entertainment, $37 each, plus drinks. Buffet dinner was delicious, with several choices of meats and veggies and potatoes. The entertainment was really good too. Then, our walk back to the van in pitch dark was an adventure in itself. Paul, do you know where we're going? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do, you know, do you know where our van is? Where's over here? Yeah, where's over here? Over there. Where's that? I can't I see anything. I think that's our car over there. If not, then... Then we're lost? <laughs> Someone's <laughs> Oh dear. Well, we managed to find the van. The next morning, headed back out to the PDR. We can highly recommend Bramwell Tourist Park as a stopover for any Cape York trip. A few kilometres along the PDR, we pulled into the Bramwell Junction Roadhouse to fuel up for the next leg of our trip to the Jardine River camp area. This is also the start of the old telegraph track. However, we were going to be travelling along the Bamager Bypass track. The condition of the road was the worst we had encountered so far. We drove through some very corrugated sections and deep floodways before reaching the Jardine River camping area. The trip from Bramwell Tourist Park to Jardine River took us just over three hours. Here we are at the Jardine River, very campground. I'm going to stay here for one night and then cross with the ferry in the morning. We've been told that uh, if we park close enough to the toilet block that we can actually use plug-in to power there. Can't use the tap water here for drinking, um, but we knew that so we've brought, we filled up one of the tanks and we have other drinking water as well, so we've got plenty of water. Yep, mayo all over this Jeff. And as you look in there, oh my goodness, what a mess. Everything's fallen out of the fridge. Paul's cleaning up. Here's all the stuff that we can throw out. Salad dressing, oily salad dressing everywhere. Oh my goodness. We managed to get the van cleaned up and decided to park at the back of the camp area overlooking the Jardine River so we could really enjoy this beautiful place and catch our breath before embarking on the last leg of the trip north in the morning. Got your ticket? Yay! That cost us $130 for the car and the van return. See ya! Ferry ticket also acts as a permit for some of the bush camping areas in the NPA. Jardine River Ferry. There you go, so he said. Start on this side and get on to the ferry on an angle. I suppose that's to allow for... Um, just make sure it's not going 
to do anything. There we go. Bottomed out a bit, not too bad. Could be worse. I'll get in now. <laughs> Good morning. Wow. How pretty is that? Kind of look pretty. And this is what we've got to... So Paul's putting the sway bars back on. He decided that um, not having them on while we're getting them off the ferry was probably a wise idea because it holds it too stiff and steady. Um, I think it was a wise choice seeing we scraped going onto the ferry a little and scraped going off the ferry. All done Paul. Well Let's done. go and explore the northern part of the Jardine River. The NPA as we call it. The here. NPA, the Northern Peninsula area. Woohoo! This has been quite a journey so far, and with too much to fit into one video, I reckon we'll need to split this trip into two parts. We've got a lot more that we'd like to share with you in the next video, so hopefully you can join us then when we visit the northernmost point of the Australian continent and make our way back down the Cape and visit some iconic locations and sample the OTT Gold Telegraph Trail. We'll also do a bit of a review of the trip, what worked and what didn't, what we would do differently. So, thanks for stopping by. Bye for now. Bye.